Hello there, this is Hans Forschner with Navcon Engineering. Last week I worked on a complex model with over 100 sources and the client was interested in getting a better understanding of the dynamics and the model considerations. The group function was a great way to dissect the model complexity and getting the information across. So in this video I like to go over the group function, the setup, how it can be used for ranking noise sources, noise propagation visualization, noise mitigation planning, and model verification. Sound plan has default groups, such as default road, rail, industrial source groups. If sources are not assigned to any groups, sound plan will assign the sources to these default groups. But that means, for example, that all roads would be in the road group. Uh, all railroad uh, sources would be, all railroad tracks would be in the rail group and all the industry sources would be in the indus industrial source group. So of course the user can set up groups that are more project relevant and by assigning the sources to the groups various assessments can be accomplished to help the project ob objectives. For example for transportation projects uh, you may be interested so here, yeah, a little schematic. You may be interested in finding out the contribution of freeway X or freeway Y, the access roads, the access ramps, the carpool lanes, the community roads, the freight tracks, the commuter tracks, and so on. If you have a um, construction noise project, you may be interested in the contribution of the moving trucks. Uh, the stationary sources like generators, crushers, cranes, and the moving sources like loaders, dozers, and uh, forklifts, and so on. For uh, refineries, it may be a question of uh, your interest of finding out what is the contribution from the crude unit, the cogen plant, the hydrogen plant, or any sources that are in the tank farm or you're more specific in terms of uh, what are the contribution from all the pumps, the fin fans, cooling towers, heat exchangers, stacks, uh, or any truck loading. So let's get started uh, on how to set up uh, group names and assigning them to sources. So here I have a very simplified water treatment plant uh, project. I open up the geodatabase and I'll open up the um, water treatment plant all right and in this project uh, we probably have uh, close to 50 different sources and uh, let me show a 3d view so, so there's a easier understanding of the geometry so we have uh, pumps and motors here all around this area. So there are all the tanks. Then we have a couple of uh, treatment buildings with um, kind of air handling units on top of the roof. There's a uh, pump house or pumping uh, station here. And then of course here we have all the receptors that are up on the bluff. And um, so that's the, the project. And uh, one way of organizing uh, the contribution or the, the pr predictions is uh, using these groups. So let me open up uh, one of these uh, point sources here. And here we have, uh, like with every source, uh, we have the assignment of source groups. So in this case, these are just the groups that are user defined are in this list. And we can e add or remove uh, group names by just clicking on this plus or minus sign here on the right hand side of this. So we add new groups with a plus and give it a name or we remove uh, whatever group we have uh, highlighted with the minus we can delete that group. If you don't like uh, the name of a group um, you can also edit or change the group definition. So let me do that for this test group. So this is uh, my water treatment test uh, sources, for example, you could write down. All right, so now this has been changed. All right, uh, so you can, uh, of course, assign these group names as you go, as you enter these um, sources. You can also assign the group names in terms of the um, using the uh, property explorer. 
So if we open up the Property Explorer, uh, in this case for the sources, there is one uh, column, uh, it's the group ID. So here we can see the group ID. And of course, after selecting one of the sources, you can assign that and assign it to all of the uh, sources that are in the list. So here we see all of the uh, motors um, where the uh, tanks are. And then we have also some HVAC system. So these are the point sources on top of the roof. All right. So let me uh, just go over uh, the, uh, let's say the uh, building A. So this is a uh, industrial building. So this building is defined with the interior noise level and uh, transmission loss through the facades, the roof, um, to define the uh, source emission on the outside. So here we have uh, the building. So let me turn it around. So there we are, have also some sources on the back side of the building. So there is a, a door and some windows. And again, here we can define the transmission loss if um, the facade is defined as a source. And then here we have the definition of the source. And again, here we have the source group assignment here. So again, you can do that as you go, as you define the um, sources on the industrial building, you can assign these groups. Um, you can have multiple groups uh, for this building. Uh, so you could actually have uh, the, the different facades in different groups or the different elements like the, the doors or windows you could have in different groups. And of course, uh, like in this case, we could have easily somewhere around uh, 15 sources here. And here's also an overview by clicking up here on the uh, property table, you can select uh, for example, the source definition. And then here we can see all of the um, sources and then also to which group these sources are assigned to. So in this case, this is Water Treatment Building A. All right. So let me close this and yeah, save it. And this is actually all I want to show in terms of the groups um, or definition in the geodatabase. Um, if you have roads and uh, railroad tracks, uh, same thing. You can assign each uh, road section to a group and then also basically define the assignment of the source, in that case, uh, road or railroad tracks to the group name. All right, so let me close this. And uh, next step I want to show is the calculation kernel. How is that impacted with the groups? So we have, for example, if I open up the receiver calculation in the single point results, uh, all we have here is just a check mark. Um, so that allows uh, the program or basically uh, the run kernel will generate for every receiver the, um, the contribution for each group. So if a source is assigned to a certain group, um, their contribution will be assigned to that group result. So that's a separate table to uh, visualize uh, the contribution for each group for every single receiver. All right. Now, the next uh, calculation here is the cross section. So let me go in here and the cross section. We also have a check mark here at the bottom. You can either select the, of course, the calculation by single frequency. So that will save everything by frequencies, or you can assign it by groups. When you have the group selected, you will be prompted, uh, uh, prompted to assign which groups do you want to use. So um, for every group, the program will have a basically a slot or memory that every contribution for every receptor will be assigned to that group and then save the way. For cross-section map, we'll be able then to select cross-section contour maps for each individual group. Or if you use the grid operation, you can combine and, um, and basically edit the contributions. All right. So in terms of the um, uh, grid calculation, you have basically the same setup. So the grid calculation, you also have the group results check mark. And then here also you can select which groups you want to use for this calculation. 
Now, if you have uh, a group that is not selected and it is a point source uh, or road source or whatever, then again, the program will use some of these default uh, source groups to assign it then to these default groups. So if by any chance you forget it, it will use these default groups. All right, so let's go over some of the results. So the first one I wanna go over is uh, just a simple result table. So here I have a result table for a single receiver. And here under details and graphics, we find the group results. So here we have the group results. And in this case, this is sorted by the contribution, the daytime level descending. So that will always put the, uh, the group with the loudest contribution at the top. So as we click through these receivers, you can always see which source has the highest contribution. So this is a very easy way of ranking the sources. All right, so let me close this and uh, let me open up the graphics and uh, highlight uh, in terms of the grid results. So that same applicable also for the cross section maps. So let me show how the contour maps uh, can be used for these groups here. So let me load this here. This is a contour map. Um, this was, um, yeah, it's basically just a basic contour map. So if I go into the file selection manager right now, it sh it's showing everything. So all the contribution. So again, uh, here we have on the left-hand side, the situations and the uh, results. On the right-hand side, the results is result number 21. So you just move that from left to right. If I right click on that, we can see what is loaded currently. So right now it's loading the sum level. So that's the summation of all of the sources, or all the source groups. So here we can make changes and say, okay, I wanna select and see just for example, what is the water treatment building A? What are the contributions? and how is the sound propagating from that building A. So I'll click OK and click OK. And now we just see this building. And again, if you remember, there was a door right here. There were also some windows. So the main noise radiation from that building is from the back. And that, of course, uh, affects quite a bit of that lower area and then also some of these uh, housing uh, or the first row of housing here. All right, so let me change that again and I'll uh, look at the HVAC system on top of the roof, HVAC system, click OK, click OK. And now here we can see the contribution from the HVAC system. Uh, remember in terms of the uh, contour maps, this is one and a half meter above the ground. So here the ground is fairly low and then the ground goes up to these receivers uh, on the bluff. So that kind of explains why the noise level is actually pretty quiet next to the building. So the building uh, provides some shielding, but as the receiver goes up the, the slope, they, at some point there's a direct line of sight to these uh, uh, HVAC systems on top of the roof. And so that explains the high contribution of the HVAC system. All right, so of course we can continue this and turn on, turn off uh, the different groups. Uh, I have this also done uh, using the, uh, the uh, cartography module. Uh, you can create a sheet with multiple maps. And in this case, I uh, added uh, a total of eight maps on this sheet. Uh, there are two maps, uh, the all sources right here and then uh, water treatment 3D. These are with all the groups active, um, just uh, 2D or 3D view to kind of get a better idea of uh, how it looks. Uh, and then we have the individual source groups here, with all the stationary motors and pumps, the HVAC system, the pumping station, the building A, B, and C. And of course, based on this, you can definitely clearly see in terms of the community, uh, the stationary motors and pumps are yeah not that that critical. 
Uh, I think the critical uh, sources here are, of course, the HVAC system on top of the uh, the uh, uh, these three buildings, and in terms of the uh, building A, the open door is also a significant source um, in terms of the impact on these uh, housing or the the receptors on the bluff here. And of course, after you treat these, at some point, then the stationary pumps. Uh, become of interest. So again, this is a good way of visualizing kind of the different contribution from different groups that you have here in the source uh, or in this project. And then here, uh, I'd like to show one more thing here. Um, in, in this map, I'm not using the grid results. I'm actually using the grid operation function in the graphics. And this grid operation function uh, allows me to treat um, the groups um, in with uh, an equation and apply reductions to the uh, contributions. So here again we have grid operations and uh, in this case I defined a formula here so by clicking on this double arrow you uh, get into this uh, formal editor so in the extended editor right here and so what you can do here is we can actually write a script of adding the uh, the different groups and applying mitigation measures to these groups. So if you look at this graphic right now, uh, or this equation right now, I'm actually uh, already assigning a reduction of eight decibels for the um, HVAC unit. So let me change that back to zero. And I also apply a uh, reduction for the, the doors here, uh, for that door on the building A. So uh, right now I'm removing both of these corrections. So again, this is grid noise map 21, fourth group, uh, second assessment, that's the daytime. Then we have five, group five, that's the HVAC systems. Uh, six is building, um, no, actually that is the stationary sources. Then here we have uh, building A, B, and C. So that is 7, 8, and 9. And here, right now, we are just adding them all up. So let me show you that. So it's doing the math and applying that. So this is the original uh, contour map without any treatments. So here we have, of course, the contribution from that door and then the contribution from the HVAC system on top of the roof and um, if we can kind of uh, want to play around with that we can apply these reductions so let's say we just do something about the HVAC systems and we uh, reduce that with whatever means we don't know necessarily what it is but let's say we put some barriers around them or exchange them for quieter units and so we uh, apply 10 decibel reduction to that Let's see what that will do here. And yeah, overall a little bit of change in this area. So right now the, the door is of course still a, a main contributor here. So let's go back and uh, we add a, uh, we basically close the door and uh, maybe apply a reduction of maybe 25 decibels to that. Click OK, 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 and then you can start seeing that, yeah, this is a significant reduction in terms of the um, community exposure here. All right. So again, uh, we have different ways of uh, presenting this, uh, either in the grid noise map, uh, just by selecting uh, group by group. Uh, again, we have these multiple sheets uh, where we have a, a map for every group. Uh, we can uh, use the grid operation to apply noise mitigation to individual groups and this is for maybe a, a course initial planning for noise control which sources are the most uh, critical ones and if we apply certain decibels is it even possible to achieve the goal that we have for uh, the client and um, and again with these uh, maps we can also look at uh, how does the uh, source propagate and um, what is the ranking of the sources 
So again, here in this view, it's very easy to see that, um, yeah, some of the sources like uh, the pumping station is really um, secondary. Uh, building B and C is probably also fairly minor impacts and and um, of course the stationary pumps the HVAC system and the the doors here are the most uh, critical sources here all right uh, that uh, kind of ends my um, presentation here and um, I hope uh, that is some food for thought uh, stay safe and healthy